grace, his mercy, and his peace be with you today through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Today I'd like to talk with you about rewards and punishments, especially the rewards and punishments Christ will give out on that last day when he comes to judge the world. For Christ is coming to judge the world. And we're all going to stand before him on that last day. What about the rewards? What about the punishments on that day? Do you think that there will be different degrees of punishments for the wicked and different degrees of, pun of rewards for the righteous? Or does everybody that's wicked get the same thing and does everybody that's righteous just get the same thing? And there are no degrees of rewards and punishments, but the righteous get everything the same, the wicked get everything the same. Let's take a look at that today and see what we can learn about it by God's word so that we can be inspired, excited, and uh, helped in our faith by this. First of all, this is a super important question for us to consider. You know why? If you as a righteous person, the Christians, don't believe that there is a reward uh, given for each of your deeds, each of your works, in different degrees, well, frankly, why would you work really hard? If we all get the exact same thing as Christians, when Christ comes back, then why work hard for, in this life, extra war awards there on that last day? Consider this. I, uh, when I was a, a young man, a little boy, I mean, actually, in uh, Cape Cod, my dad one day was going out to uh, pick up firewood for the winter. So we had a little car. He had a lot of wood. So we made many trips. I had a friend, little friend Robert over, we were just small little guys, and dad uh, would drop off all this wood from the car and he'd say, you and Robert, Greg, you and Robert are going to take it and stack it in the backyard while I go to get some more wood. Well, when he got back from the first trip and came back for the second one, he's like, found us just sitting around doing nothing. He said, why are you sitting around doing nothing? I said, because we said, because we've already finished. We'd finished that very quickly and stacked them all up. He said, well, okay, well next time when I do another run, here's what we'll do. If you finish early stacking all that wood, go around the yard and pick up sticks and put them in a pile and I'll give you a penny a stick. Well, my dad didn't think much of that. He thought, well, it's just a little task. Give him something to do. I'll give him a buck at the end. When dad drove away in the car, we said, challenge on, accept it. So Robert, little Robert and I decided, hey, let's pick up as many sticks as we can because we're going to get a penny a stick. And so we went running around like nuts around the yard. We were laughing. We were having joy. We were uh, optimistic. We were enthused. We picked up as many sticks and calculated them carefully so that by the end of the day, after several more trips, Dad came and said, how much do I owe you? He was thinking, you know, a dollar, two dollars, hundred sticks. We said, ten bucks, please. He was shocked. He's like, $10? He says, that would be a thousand sticks. And we were like, yeah, well, we picked up a thousand. Come see. And he looked at the pile, and indeed, there were the thousand sticks. And he's like, well, I guess, I guess you earned it. And here he handed us the 10, and we were overjoyed. The point is, if we had no reward that we were working for, no wages that we could earn, we would have just been like the first time, sitting around doing absolutely nothing, twiddling our thumbs. But when the reward was promised us, you get a penny per stick, man, that just enthused Robert and I. We started running around with joy. It changed our day. It changed our energy. It changed our optimism. It changed our hope. It changed our joy. We just loved getting that because we we're going with the eye towards the reward. Well, how does it work, though, on the last day when Jesus comes to judge the world and we all have to stand before him on the last day? Does he promise different rewards to Christians according to the work that they do? Or does everybody just get the exact same thing? Same thing for the wicked. Do they get all the same thing or are there degrees of punishment depending on what evil they did? Let's take a look here. And what can we say about that? Well, a lot of Christians in the churches today believe that there are no degrees of rewards for the righteous or of punishments for the wicked. And where do they get that? Well, they say 
Salvation is a free gift. And the kingdom of God is a free gift, so all the righteous get the same thing, we're equal. Is that true? Yes, that is absolutely true. So, yes, we do get equal things there. How about for degrees of sin? They say there are no degrees of sin. All the wicked get hell, they would say, because sin is a sin is a sin. If you commit sin and you reject Christ, you're going to go to hell for that, and you're going to suffer the same punishment. All the wicked get the same reward for their evil deeds, namely damnation and hell forever. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. So in the overarching larger picture, frankly, there are no degrees of rewards. The Christians who have believed on Christ and followed him all get the same exact reward, namely the kingdom given to you as a free gift. Salvation is a free gift. We're all equal. Amen? Amen. Praise God for that. And for the wicked, they also get the exact uh, same reward, namely damnation, exclusion from God's presence. Hell would be their final destiny. We pray that they repent and not go there. But if not, they will be damned in the same way. All with the same reward. For God says in the Bible, the soul that sins shall die, and they shall suffer the punishment, the wicked, of eternal destruction and exclusion from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. Same reward for the wicked, same reward for you and me, the righteous, because we all have the same salvation. Namely, uh, we have received the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness through the one man, Jesus Christ. So the righteous will go away into eternal life, Matthew 25, but the wicked will go away into eternal punishment. <clears throat> so is there equality in that sense? Yes. Degrees? Not in that sense. Salvation is free in the kingdom, and hell is the reward also then of the wicked for their sin. All the same. That being said, that's the larger picture. What about the more specific individual picture for each one of us? as Christians or the wicked for their wickedness. Are there actually degrees of rewards for the righteous based on work done here in this world? And are there degrees of punishment for the wicked based upon what evil they did in this world? Well, here we're not talking so much about how to get to heaven, which is a free gift, or to get to hell, that's through sin and rejecting Christ, but are there degrees? What can we say about that? Well, let's take a look at the Old Testament. You tell me, let's do a little discovery here on our own. <clears throat> okay, let's start out with sex. Does that wake everybody up this morning? If I just say that word? Okay, here we go. Exodus 22, verse 16. God says this in the Old Testament law. If a man seduces a virgin who is not betrothed and lies with her, he shall give the marriage present for her and make her his wife. Okay? So that's a sin, but that's the judgment. How about this one? Leviticus 20, verse 10. If a man commits adultery with the wife of his neighbor, both the adulterer and the adulteress shall be put to death. So are those both sins to have sex outside of marriage with an unbetrothed virgin? That's a sin. That's called fornication. To lie and have sex with someone who's your neighbor's wife, that is also a sin. Are they both sins? Yes? Yes. yes. Are they the same degree? No. no. Very different degrees of sin. Both wrong, different degrees. Do they carry the same punishment? <laughs> the one punishment, I guess you could say, is he's got to marry her. <laughs> Maybe that's a blessing too. Uh, but he has to marry the virgin that he slept with and then make her his wife. What about if you sleep with the life, wife of uh, one of your neighbors, though, and commit adultery? The punishment in this case for that sin is death. Both are to be killed. So notice, both are sins, fornication and adultery, but there are different degrees of sin and different results of punishment based upon what the sin was. Can I give you one more example? Let's take a look at um, <clears throat> Exodus uh, 22 again. This is on murder. God says, whoever strikes a man so that he dies shall be put to death. But if he did not lie in wait for him, but, let, but God let him fall into his hand, 
then I will appoint for you a place to which he may flee. But if a man willfully attacks another to kill him treacherously, you shall take him from my altar that he may die. So in this case, both are murder, correct? One is, they're both killing a man, they're both sins. But in the one case, it's first degree murder. You intended to kill him. You were treacherously lying in wait to slay this person. That carries a certain punishment. The other degree is this happened by circumstance or by accident maybe, uh, but you weren't intending to kill him, but he, you did kill him. That is a different degree. In that case, you flee to another city. You can live, but that's a punishment, but you get saved. The other one, you're put to death if you were first degree murder. Second degree murder takes a different degree. Notice even the word first degree, second degree. There are different degrees of sin in the Old Testament. And according to God, different degrees of sentence or punishment for those crimes. Amen? Why does God differentiate between one sin and another? One's greater, one's lighter, one's heavier. Well, because God, Psalm 7 says, is a righteous judge. Psalm 37, the Lord loves justice. Psalm 97, righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. And in Deuteronomy 25, God says, if a man is guilty, he stands before a judge and he needs to be beaten, he shall be beaten, quote, with the number of stripes in proportion to his offense. Because God is just, it's going to be repaid according to the offense. So Job 34, according to the work of a man, God will requite him, and according to his ways, he will make it befall him. So are there degrees of sin? Say yes or no. Yes. Uh, are there different degrees of punishment according to God, Old Testament? Yes, there are. How about for righteousness, righteousness though? How about for good deeds that you do? Well, remember, we read a moment ago there when uh, David had the chance to kill Saul. Saul was sleeping and he stole uh, the spear from next to Saul and he let Saul live. Uh, Saul uh, sees it and, well, at another point he says, uh, this is when David spared him the first time, <clears throat> uh, uh, Saul said, you are more righteous than I, for you have repaid me good, but I have repaid you evil. The Lord reward you, David, with good for what you have done to me this day. And on the second time when David spared the king's life, David says, uh, the Lord rewards every man for his righteousness and his faithfulness. Did God reward David for sparing King Saul? Yeah, he made him king and established his kingdom in the land. And David said in Psalm 18, the Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands, he recompensed me. So are there degrees of righteousness? Saul says, you're more righteous than I. And he got a great reward for sparing the king. In fact, he became king. <clears throat> so is that just Old Testament, though? Eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. God was just back then. But how about the New Testament? Are there degrees of sin and punishment and degrees of righteousness and reward in the New Testament? Well, let's consider John 19. Remember when Jesus was before Pilate and... Uh, <clears throat> Pilate says to him, where are you from? And Jesus gave no answer, remember? Pilate therefore said to him, you won't speak to me. Don't you know that I have the power to release you and the power to crucify you? And Jesus answered him, you would have no power over me unless it had been given you from above. Watch this. He says, therefore, says Jesus, he who delivered me to you has the greater sin. Does Jesus note or recognize degrees of sin? Pilate, was he sinning? Oh, huge, huge. This guy was sinning terribly, killing the Christ unjustly. But on the other hand, Pilate didn't wake up that day intending to do evil. He was kind of pressured into it. And he also had the authority to judge. Whereas the Jews who had the greater sin woke up that day with pure evil intent to murder on their hearts. And they didn't have the authority to do so, but did it unjustly. They had the, what kind of sin? greater sin. So there are degrees of sin. Are there degrees of punishment? And will there be on the last day when Christ comes for the wicked? Luke 12, Jesus says, 
that servant who knew his master's will but did not make ready or act according to his will shall receive a severe beating. But he who did not know and did what deserved a beating shall receive a light beating. So that's of the last day. That's of judgment. One is more severe for a greater sin. One is less severe. Both super severe. But there are degrees you can see. According to their deeds, so will he repay. Notice Jesus also says of the last day in Matthew chapter 11, it says he began to upbraid the t- cities where most of his mighty works have been done because they didn't repent. And he said to them, Woe to you, Capernaum! Will you be exalted to heaven? You shall be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works done in you had been done in Sodom, they would have repented. Uh, uh, they, sorry, they would have remained until this day. But I tell you that I shall be more tolerable <clears throat> on the day of judgment for Sodom than for you. <laughs> wow, can you imagine that? Sodom, was the, were they sinners? Yeah. Yes. Will they receive a great judgment on the last day? Yes, they will. What does Jesus say to the Jews, though? That it'll be more tolerable on that day for them than for the judgment that will fall on you Jews. Why? Because if I were there and had preached and done my mighty works to them, they would have repented. But you have had me, hearing my preaching, saw my mighty works, and you rejected me. You're worse than Sodom. It shall be less tolerable for you on that day than for these people. So notice, on the last day, there are degrees of punishment for sin in hell based upon deeds done and based upon the knowledge, whether you had, uh, you know, Jesus there preaching or not. So think about this. Let not many of you become teachers, my brethren, says James, for you know that we who teach shall be judged with greater strictness. Puts me in fear as a preacher, right? I better preach the right thing. The captain of the ship always has more responsibility and uh, accountability than the swabby uh, if the ship should go down. Think about in war, if you have, uh, you know, everybody serving well in war, uh, you have uh, the lower person, he does a, a good job, but if a higher person, like the captain of the ship, does a worse job, well, that's a big problem. Uh, in that sense, you could say uh, a witch doctor in the deepest, darkest jungles of Africa is doing evil. But if you compare that to the judgment that would fall upon a liberal Christian pastor in the West who has the Bible, baptism, the Lord's Supper, a church, is watching over God's people, uh, knows the truth and yet rejects it, and teaches otherwise, and acts contrary to the word, The judgment falling upon that liberal Christian pastor will be greater than upon the witch doctor in the deepest, darkest jungles of Africa because he knew more. He should have known more. It'll be a stricter judgment and greater severity will fall upon him on that day for the greater sin. So there are degrees for the wicked in hell. How about for the righteous, though, in heaven? Are there degrees on the last day as we enter into the new world of rewards for the righteous. Let's take a look in the New Testament for that one in Luke uh, chapter 6. Jesus says, Love your enemies and do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? In other words, why would I give you anything for that? Even sinners do that. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. But love your enemies. Do good and lend expecting nothing in return, and your reward will be great. So, is it a righteous thing to do to love those who love you? Amen? Yeah, sure. I love you guys. You love me. You're righteous. I'm righteous, hopefully. And we love each other. Is it good to pray for the righteous? Sure. God loves that. Uh, Is it good to lend to people? Sure. But Jesus says it's a far greater righteousness to pray for those who abuse you, to love your enemies, to do them good, because sinners don't do that. 
go for the greater thing and lend to them and don't even expect anything in return and your reward will be great. As Jesus said, when you give a dinner or a banquet, don't invite your friends or brothers or kinsmen or rich neighbors lest they invite you in return and you be repaid. If you get repaid on earth, I'm not going to repay you at the last day. But he says, but when you give a feast, invite the poor, the maimed, the lame, and the blind, for they, you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. You will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. In other words, I, the Lord, will consider it my personal responsibility to repay you and reward you for those great works done to those who could not repay you. I'll repay it on that day. Does it sound like there are degrees here that we can run for? Is a dad, is Christ that is, gone up to heaven like my dad drove away to get more wood? Does he tell us, look, a penny a stick, go for it, enjoy. Uh, you've got rewards before you to run towards. If you're in war and you are a, a lowly uh, kitchen kind of guy, you're going to get commended for doing a great job serving the troops. That's an awesome thing. But would not the man who storms the castle, uh, leaving the camp of, of safety, running behind enemy lines and capturing their flag and, and bringing it back and, and uh, risking his life with greater deeds, won't he receive a greater reward? Doesn't he on earth? Consider uh, what Jesus said uh, in Luke chapter 19. A nobleman, namely talking about himself, a prince once went into a far country to receive a kingdom and then return. That's Jesus. Calling ten of his servants, that's the Christians, he gave them ten pounds and said, trade with these until I come. So he went away and he came back, having received the kingdom. And he said, come on, come over here, let's see how you did. When he uh, returned, having received it, he brought them and the one first came and said, Lord, look, here your pound has made ten pounds more. And he said to him, Jesus said to the Christian, that is, well done, good servant. You've been faithful over in a very little. Therefore, you shall have authority over ten cities. And then the second came. How'd you do? Well, look, Lord, your pound made five pounds more. And he says, well done again, good servant. You shall be over five cities. Then the one who said, well, no, uh, I didn't really think about the reward. I don't really, didn't do anything. I just hid it in a napkin. And the master in this case will say, take that pound from him and give it to him who has the 10 pounds. For I tell you that to everyone who has will more be given, but from him who has not, even what he thinks he has, will be taken away. So notice, it's according to your deeds, according to your efforts, your strivings, what you did in this life. Our present life does affect our future life in the world to come. There are degrees and rewards for work done here. Uh, you could get 10 cities. You could get five cities. My point then is we should go for it. God wants us to go for the reward. For salvation is a free gift. The kingdom is free. All that, it's the same reward. There are rewards individually for deeds done for the king. And you know what the cool thing about this is? It transforms our life. You know, if you don't think there's any reward, you're going to sit around and twiddle your thumbs just waiting for Jesus to return. And it's sort of like socialism. Nobody wants to work because you're not going to get anything out of it. Why should I work? It's all the same reward. What's the big deal? And it's boring. Your life is lackluster. It's dull. It's like not driven. But then when dad comes along and says, look, I'll give you a penny a stick until I come back. Then you can be like, Robert, let's go. It's great for teamwork. It gives the to joy. Hey, let's go do this. Let's see if we can make 10 bucks out of this. And we run around the yard picking up sticks with joy, encouraging each other. Optimistic, excited, energetic, hopeful, working as a team, laughing as we go, uh, just enjoying the day. If you want to enjoy your life uh, and have uh, zeal and hope and optimism and energy, remember Judgment Day. God is not saying this to put a burden on you, but to encourage you and say, look, there's a gold medal out there. Run for it. I, I, I'm going to give you a penny a stick. Uh, and more than that, I'm going to reward you mightily. Mark, Matthew 16, verse 27. For the Son of Man is to come with his holy angels 
in the glory of his Father, and then he will repay every man for what he has done. Do you have to do great and huge works? No. Jesus says, whoever even gives a cup of cold water to one of these little ones, because he is the disciple, truly I say to you, he shall not lose his reward. Just do your regular life as unto the Lord, your regular work, your regular vocation, and run for it. For he will render to every man according to his work, says Paul, Romans 2, 1 Peter 1. Peter says, God judges each one of us impartially according to our deeds. Paul again in 2 Corinthians 5, we must all appear before this judgment seat of Christ so that each one may receive good or evil according to what he's done in the body. And 1 Corinthians 3, each shall receive his wages according to his labor. So salvation is free, but wages can be earned, rewards can be earned, uh, that are individual at the return of our Lord. So what's my point today? What's the upshot of all this? What's God mean to tell us? And what do I seek to inspire us to do? Well, it's just like Robert and I say, look, there's a reward before us. Let's run as a team in this. This is not a competition. This is a team effort. We can encourage each other in living in the light of Dad's promise that he's coming again and will reward us on Judgment Day for the work done here in this life. Jesus says, go for the gold, go for the silver, go for the bronze, be an Olympic athlete and run while there is time. And it's holy for you to do this. You know, the number one reason we do good is love of God. The second reason is love of our neighbor. But it is also holy for us to run for, with an eye towards, the reward. You know why? Because that's faith simply taking hold of the promise of Christ, running by the word, believing it, and living according to it. And we know Hebrews 11 says, for whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. And boy, I just remember the joy I had on that day, how it transformed a dull, lackluster, hot day. It was hot. We were sweating. We were not enjoying ourselves until the reward was put out before us. And then the heat didn't matter. The trouble didn't matter. The carrying of the wood and the strength it required didn't matter. We were like supermen because the reward was exciting for us and gave us joy. If you want optimism in life, keep your eyes on the promises of God. The wicked in our days are just storing up more wrath for themselves. God, please grant them repentance because it'll be even worse for them on that day if they don't repent. But 2 Chronicles 15 says, but for you, you Christians, take courage. Don't let your hands be weak for your work shall be rewarded. Isn't that encouraging for us? And again, we're all on the same team, like Robert and I. Let's encourage each other in this for dad has given us his word Christ is coming again. Our Lord Jesus is returning on the clouds of heaven. He comes with might. His arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him and his recompense before him. Jesus Christ will give it to you on that day. Let's run with joy, friends, today with the desire to hear these words joyfully from him on that day. Great job. Good job. Good job, Christians. Good job, you. My good and faithful servant, you've been faithful in a little. Watch this. I set you over much. Now enter into the joy of your master. In Jesus' name.